So was Disney in your sights before you got the leaks that now have become so viral? Just to refresh the audience, Chris is the one who got all those videos of I'm sneaking. I'm putting my not so secret gay agenda in wherever I can. And nobody's giving me a hard time. And, you know, the videotape of the president talking about her queer children and how they need to have more queer representation and all their leads and blah, 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 blah. That was all from Chris. So were you focused on Disney before that? Yeah, actually, um, you know, last year I did a report on Disney, which was promoting critical race theory. Uh, I, pro- I reported on their internal employee training program that was saying that America is fundamentally a racist country. It was telling white employees to complete a white privilege checklist and address their white fragility. Uh, and then kind of supporting a number of fashionable left wing causes like defunding the police, decolonizing your bookshelf, et cetera, et cetera. And it was really among all the companies that I uh, reported on one of the most uh, egregious and shocking examples of critical race theory in the workplace. And those same sources, I have a number of sources with the company within the company came back to me this year and said, hey, Chris, you know, in this dust up with the governor about the parental rights and education bill, uh, which prohibited schools from teaching uh, about sexuality to kids in grades K through three, uh, I have these videos. And so my source dropped me the videos. And when I saw them, I knew it was going to be a big story. You just have that feeling that goes uh, kind of on the back of your neck saying, okay, this is some exclusive information people need to hear. And it really did change the game. I I actually attended the bill signing uh, with Governor DeSantis when he stripped Disney of its special self-governing status. And he said very clearly to the audience, um, these videos were really what pushed me over the edge uh, in in saying that we need to start taking action against these companies uh, that are transgressing the values of, uh, of his constituents, of the people in Florida. What was it about the Disney videos that made you have that feeling? Because you've received countless leaks from people in different corporations and schools. And so, I mean, you, this is your business now. You're the guy people go to if they've got this. So what was it about the Disney videos that stood out? I think it's really two things. And, and I always kind of judge these things on a combination of both. It's content and context. And so the content itself was very shocking. You had, uh, you know, one one of the show producers said that they're actually created a computer program to track the number of transgender characters, bisexual characters, asexual characters, gender non-conforming characters. They're actually tracking this uh, as far as data, kind of embedding this and programming, targeting kids as young as two years old. And then you have other employees very brazenly saying, you know, we're following this kind of radical left-wing gender ideology. They banned the word boys and girls in all of the theme parks, um, preferring kind of gender neutral uh, uh, pronouns and descriptors, Uh, you know, and then they're supporting, for example, uh, uh, transgender surgeries for the employees of Disney's, um, uh, for the children of Disney employees um, and so on and so forth. And so the content itself was, I think, quite shocking and very relevant to this debate that we're having. Just and then also the people, context is, yeah, go ahead, sorry. is this political fight. So you have a very uh, high intensity political fight. It's really the t- first time conservatives have really stepped up and pushed back against these woke mm. corporations led by the governor uh, of Florida. And so I knew that there was the explosive context of this political fight and this content that would really uh, set it off to the next level. And so, uh, uh, when you have those two things, you know, you you know, you have a good story, you know, something mm-hmm. fun is going to happen. And, you know, it's like part of I don't know whether Disney did this specifically, but we've been I know it's overused, but gaslit so many times by people on the left telling us this stuff isn't happening. They haven't gone woke. They're not pushing critical race theory. There's no radical trans ideology being shoved down the throats of America or on our children. And we know it's not true. We've lived it. We saw it during Zooms in the pandemic. And yet they continue to lie right to our faces. So it is extraordinary to have it. I mean, at the highest levels, for, you know, within Disney, on camera, all right there in black and white. Here's uh, just a little, okay, just to refresh people's memory, I think. Let's see. Mm, let's do Carrie Burke. She was the Disney executive uh, talking about the more needing more characters, soundbite one. I'm, I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually, um, uh, one transgender child. Um 
um, and one pansexual child, um, and and also as a leader. Um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I and I and I realized, oh, it it actually is true. And I hope this is a moment where, shoot, um, the fifty percent of the tears, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> are coming. Um, uh, we don't. We just don't allow each other to go backwards. That's uh, that, that clip is so aggravating because as the mother of three young children, I I reject her tears. You know who I'm crying for? I'm crying for the young children who you are sexualizing with inappropriate content for their age. You know, I'm crying for my friend who tried to watch a movie about a panda and left her very young daughters there to watch it, only to come back and find out they'd been educated on periods, something she was denied the opportunity to talk to them about first, thanks to that woman there. Like, I don't, I have no empathy for her tears, none whatsoever. And we wouldn't know about it if you didn't open up this channel of communication with, I have to say, brave Disney employees who took a risk by taping it, cutting it, and sending it along. Yeah, that's, that's right. And I think uh, what I've saw in a lot of these videos is that you see the personal politics and then sometimes the personal pathologies of a lot of these employees that are then elevated into a kind of corporate dogma. And what's happening inside Disney is something that's happening inside a lot of companies. It's actually really, I think, the more interesting story as far as the structure and how politics works. You have the CEO, which is, of course, a straight uh, white male. Uh, uh, he's made to feel very guilty for those attributes. And then he was basically bullied into creating these race and, and sexuality segregated employee activist groups. So there's a kind of black activist group, with they, which they originally called Wakanda. There's a gay activist group, et cetera, et cetera. And then so the, 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 the CEO is delegating the company's moral authority to these internal activist organizations who then turn around and really bully him into submitting to whatever the fashionable political ideology uh, of, of the day is, even if it contradicts the values of most Disney employees and certainly most Disney uh, customers. But he's powerless to do anything. You can see very clearly the video where he's speaking. It's almost like a hostage tape. Um, it's really a remarkable document how com corporate leaders have delegated their moral authority to these activist groups, and then they're really at their mercy. And so whatever kind of whatever kind of theory, uh, which would seem maybe uh, 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 appropriate or at least expected in a gender studies class at Vassar College, uh, is now driving programming decisions targeting kids as young as two years old. Uh, and so companies are in this bind. How do they push back against the radical ideological elements within their own corporate culture? Uh, and will there be a price to pay if they do not? Uh, and I think what's been gratifying with this reporting and then the activism that I've done around Disney is that it is making a difference. You've noticed that Disney, which was all in on teaching gender ideology to kindergartners, has been silent on Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've really been silent on this controversy ever since it really turned public opinion against them. Are you tired of feeling like someone's always watching you on the internet? Maybe advertisers know a little bit too much about you, or you're concerned about the privacy of your identity. Who isn't? Using incognito mode will not solve the problem either. IP Vanish VPN is here to help you. They will protect your right to privacy and help you stay anonymous online. IP Vanish helps you safely browse the internet without exposing all your private details to third parties. You can use IP Vanish on your computer, tablet, phone, even devices like your Fire Stick when you're streaming media. When you use IP Vanish, all of your data is encrypted. IP Vanish makes you virtually invisible online. It's that simple. IP Vanish is offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan. Think about that. 70% off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That is like getting nine months for free. IP Vanish is super easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you are instantly protected. Take your privacy back today with the brand rated 4.6 out of 5 on Trustpilot. Go to ipvanish.com slash Megan and use that promo code Megan to claim your 70% savings, I-P-V-A-N-I-S-H dot com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.